What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to For The Fans Extra. This is a chance for me and of course my co-host Ben to give you guys a light-hearted analysis immediately after the final whistle of England's performances during the World Cup. As a preview for what's to come, we're going to be kicking off with the pre-tournament friendly against Honduras and the question on everyone's lips was, would England storm to victory or would Honduras turn up and rain on the Free Lions parade? Let's get straight into this. Da-da! Here we are. It's me, Ben, co-host Jack. How are you doing, Ben? I'm good. Well, I'll say I'm good. I've just sat, sat through 140 minutes, or it could be longer. I've got no idea how long it was in the end, of uh, England nil, Honduras nil. As if 90 wasn't enough. I know, as if 90 wasn't enough. Actually, we saw far too much Adrian Charles. We saw more of Adrian Charles than we did Wayne Rooney. Uh, anyway. It's worryingly true, that statistic. I'm not sure which is worse. So... I think Jack said in the intro, England extra, here we go. We're going to talk about England uh, throughout the World Cup. We're starting with Honduras, the last friendly England play before their trip to Italy. I can I can only assume in, uh, Italy are shaking in their boots. Can we get it clear? It's a trip to Brazil to play Italy. We don't want people getting confused thinking the World Cup's in Italy. I know oh, that, did I, is that how I made it sound? Yeah, well, you said that there's a trip to Italy going on, and I'm just sat here thinking, if we're going to Italy, bloody hell, Miami's a bit of a way out of the way to get climatised. Yeah, well, Milan's lovely this time of year. We can guarantee there'd be no weather obscurities. Anyway, um, what do we think about the way England lined up then? Well, it was kind of what people expected. Yeah. Uh, what did you make of it? You look at it... 4-2-3-1 there or thereabouts. Obviously, there's quite a lot of fluidity in the final third in terms of who was where. Uh, I think Roy alluded to at the start saying that Sterling may well have started if he wasn't suspended, obviously, from the sending off. You kind of got to assume that would be with Welbeck on the left. Maybe Lalana. I don't know. Where, I mean, where would Sterling fit in that? I can only assume he would have played instead of Welbeck because I think I do like Lalana. I'm sure we'll talk. Yeah, he had a bit of a quiet game, but no. I mean, I look at the lineup. Obviously, Hart, Johnson, Kale, Jadielka, Baines at the back. There isn't an alternative there, unfortunately. As much as people might want to get rid of Johnson, um, there just isn't anyone who's capable of filling that role. Unless you want to play Milner at right back, and my God, we don't want to play Milner at right back. I don't want to play Milner at right back. Uh, Gerard and Henderson in the centre. Uh, Lalana, Rooney, Welbeck just ahead and then Sturridge leading the way but as we said there was quite a lot of fluidity there um, Honduras lined up I believe with a 4-4-2 there or thereabouts certainly by the end after the sending off they were playing a 4-4-1 so one assumes it was a 4-4-2 um, but it, it was it was an odd game because of obviously the divide that ensued um, I don't know what you made of the way England lined up if there was any kind of Questions that were raised by that starting lineup, even when you just saw it before the game even began. Well, the way I was watching it, I thought, okay, like you, you see the lineup, you see the four-two-three-one, you think, oh, great, we're playing that nice kind of flowy football. Within about ten minutes, we've reverted to four-four-two, yeah, um, or four-one-one, and I, I was a bit like, well, I'm all for this idea, Roy, but now what we've got is Fulham and West Brom playing against Honduras, and really, we should be trying to just get at Honduras. Because as we can see, all they, all they really want to do is kick the crap out of us. Um, so I didn't like the fact we suddenly had just Lalana playing right midfield, Welbeck playing left midfield, and Rooney in behind Sturridge. Uh, sometimes they were next to each other, sometimes they were the other way around. I just... Uh, just I honestly, I cannot stand it. Um, I thought, like you say, I think Sterling would have changed the game. I think Barkley showed when he came on, and... Uh, Lalana showed in sort of patches as in storage that if you run at a defence, they fucking hate it. Um, yeah. I should say now to those listening, this show will be a little bit more explicit than uh, previous shows. I can feel myself having a ranty swear moment. That's fine. That, I think that's every England fan needs a ranty swear. Well, I'm going to have a ranty swear straight away now. About Wayne Rooney. Now, are, we, are we on back onto Rooney? Because the viewers were not happy about your comments on Wayne Rooney. Most the United fans, but we are two Liverpool fans. We are, of course, the most biased people in the world. Well, I don't think I am a biased Liverpool fan. And we'll get onto the fact that Glenn Johnson is fucking horrendous. Yeah. After the Rooney bashing, Rooney. Right. Okay. There was a there was a segment at half time about how Rooney's movement was good when running forward with Welbeck and Sturridge. It wasn't good. Let, we can make the comparison because he came on for him. Barkley has superb attacking movement. His movement is so much better than Rooney's, it is not even comparable. Rooney's movement comes from his starting position being fucking abhorrent. 
he, he has to make up by running forward. There was a moment when they showed the clip, he's on the right hand side, and suddenly he's sprinting to get into the box. Do you know why that wouldn't happen to Barkley? Because he'd already be in the right place. Rooney Re- Re- makes these sort of lung busting runs because he's not in position. He's fucking dreadful. Well, well the, for thing, the thing is with oh, England is hate in, it. England build from deep in midfield. But I'm kind of amazed at how deep Henderson will sit at times and. It, it was kind of you've got Jan and Henderson who will sit deeper with the ball in England naturally we build from the back it's been a kind of recurring theme you know you'll pass around the defenders get it deep hit it wide if you can and the issue is that Rooney rather than trying to make the space where he starts he always comes deep to get the ball and what he does is come in deep is he gets the ball at feet he is not capable of beating a man with his back to goal you know 40 uh, yards well, from goal I don't but, know if Rooney's lost the out of pace but it is just Every time he gets the ball, I think, you're going to pass it backwards. Well, this is the thing. There's all this space in behind him and he doesn't do that. Whereas when Barkley comes on, he's got this energy. And he's, as you mentioned on Twitter, I think it was, he's always looking up and he knows what's going on. And the thing that I love about Barkley, and it's kind of gone from modern football, is the ability for a central midfielder to beat a man. Because in modern football, the way teams line up, as soon as Barkley breaks past one centre mid... All hell mm. goes loose because modern formations cannot deal with the idea of a centre mid running past another central midfielder. It's like this mind-boggling thing. And as soon as you've got a central midfielder with a few men ahead running out of defence, there's just chaos. And the formation goes out of the window for the other team. It's those quick bursts through the midfield, which I think are Barclays' main strength. And as you mentioned, Rooney really just doesn't have that pace. And as much as I love Rooney, he just doesn't he doesn't suit playing off the front man. He should be playing up top if at all. And because he's not played there, yeah. it just doesn't work for him. I mean, you could drop storage for him. We touched upon, I think, in one of the earlier podcasts that storage just sometimes has these games where he's shit. And yeah, he was he... shit today. I'm sorry, he was crap today. He didn't finish a few opportunities that fell his well way. His highlight of his performance was not decking the guy who kicked the ball at him from <laughs> point blank. That was his the restra- highlight His restraint was the highlight. The, the, I don't want to, like, hey, I'm sure we'll get shit f- for slagging Rooney. And I'm sure it's going to look as if, because we support Liverpool, we're just giving, we're just giving Rooney shit. Not true at all. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to get the comments as well, because we got him in the English show we did yesterday, that people believe that because Rooney has got experience with England and he's, he's scored tons of goals against Moldova and San Marino, that he has to be playing because he's got this experience. What Wayne Rooney has in an English shirt, and this goes for many people, this goes for Gerrard, this goes for Lampard, he has experience of being a failure for England. He doesn't have the experience, of the, he's got no happy memories of being in an England shirt, apart from maybe Euro 2004, which I will say was, was 10 years ago. That is the last time Wayne Rooney showed up at an international tournament. Ten years ago, he's not scored at a World Cup. Like you see all these stats that people throw around, and we've kind of continued the debate of Rooney onto Twitter at for the mm. fans show, and we've kind of asked people, how would you fit Rooney in if you do, or do you drop him? And a lot of people go, oh well, he's got fourteen goals and three assists or whatever in seventeen games. It's like, well, when you beat San Marino twelve nil over two games, so you beat Moldova nine nil over two games. It's no wonder he's got a load of fucking goals, and yeah. he, he's never turned up at major tournaments. As you mentioned, ten years ago was the last. One and it's the case for many England players that it's not just Rooney, it just so happens to be that Rooney's one of these players who's been left over from those previous tournaments who still finds his way into the side and still produces the same crap that you see from England teams for 800 uh, sorry, eight games and 600 minutes. Rooney has no goals and a one red card at international tournaments uh, for a World Cup. Sorry, it's like I'm not uh, honestly, I don't want to just go on his back and I'm sure he doesn't care what I think, but. For this England team to go anywhere, Rooney should, should well, he should just be left out of the team. Not the squad. We've, we touched on it before that if you're going to bring on a Wayne Rooney, you bring on a, a pissed off Wayne Rooney on 60 who wants to show everyone that they're wrong. That's when you bring Wayne Rooney on. Don't start him because he doesn't offer anything at all. Bring on, a, bring on an energy filled, angry Wayne Rooney. And he might get sent off, but he might get you two goals to win you a game. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> looking for that, what did you make of England defensively? Because. We, we, we weren't we were tested. Fine. We weren't tested, were we? Honduras, they had, um, is it Jerry Bankston, who scored nine goals in qualifying for them? There was nothing of him. I thought, well, in England, like, like you say, England weren't really tested. I should say, I thought Honduras actually, despite the fact they were kicking the shit out of each other and, and, and us, 
they, yeah. I think they got to a point where they were just like, fuck England, we're just going to start kicking the shit out of each other because this is boring. I'm, I'm bored. With 10 men, England failed to break them down, but they did defend, I thought, very, very well. They were very um, ri- kind of rigid in the way they set up, and they yeah. were happy to sit behind the ball, but they didn't drop too deep. They, they, You could tell that they were well-versed in playing that style of football. Yeah, and, and that's, that is the problem I find with Hodgson teams is that Hodgson's great against a certain calibre of team. He'll probably be quite good against Italy and Uruguay because he has to start out thinking them. When it comes to just ruthless aggression of beating a team, like Honduras, like Peru, like Ecuador, we, are, we just look like we've run out of ideas. You've got creative players on the pitch, like Lallana who are, and Gerard even, who are just clueless. They just don't know what they're doing. There's, there's no space. We're not playing wide enough. I'll get on to Johnson now. Johnson, if you cut inside one more time, if you cut inside in the World Cup, I'm just turning it off. I'm fucking sick of it. Is that All he promise? does is run down the line, cuts inside, and runs into a defender. Make the pitch wider. He tries he to win the foul as well. Time. He falls to the ground. You're oh, forgetting that. He falls to the so ground. And then uh, there was one incident in the first half where he cut inside within 10 minutes, fell to the ground, and the ref gave the foul the other way. And I just sat there going, he deserves that for that being so crap. It is infuriating. I, I appreciate, if you're watching this, it's probably coming across as two very bitter England fans having a rant. There is some key information in here somewhere amongst the angry curses and stuff. I actually, I should say, I am bitter. I've just spent two hours, two and a half hours watching shit. And, and then I'm Adrian spo- Charles, I guess that I'm, falls into the same category. I'm, but. I'm supposed to believe, like I support England. I watch, I've probably watched ninety five percent of their game, probably more than that, ninety nine percent of their games in the time I've been alive and watching football. So, like, I feel entitled to be a bit like I feel conned. That we can't beat a 10-man Honduran team, whether the conditions are shit or not. We just can get a goal. Uh, were there any positives? Jordan Henderson's pass accuracy in the first half was, was great. He was great. Hen- Henderson was spreading the ball about. He, he does hit it very softly. Oh, Jack, sorry. Hello? We're going to have to stop. Are we? Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to stop here. I've just been told. Yep, there's a, there's a, there's a. I think there's a potential storm coming in. My God! Sorry for listening. We're back in. We'll be back in ten seconds. Just cut to a break. Okay, folks. So sorry for the delay. We have managed to grab a quick word with the podcast manager who can hopefully fill us in on exactly what's happening because right now I don't have a clue. So, um, yeah, can, can you fill us in a little bit more and maybe enlighten us? Well, first things first, I'm not the podcast manager. Oh, okay. I'm the, for the fans manager. Oh, I see. So you are the man that we need to talk to right now about what's going on. Uh, I think you could say that, yes. Right, well, we can, we can see from outside the weather conditions are atrocious. What have you got to say about it? Is it we, know, we know it's not your fault, but what can you do to solve this problem? Well, as you can see, there's a bit of lightning in the air at the moment. Yeah, we've seen the lightning. We know what's happening out there. So can you tell us, is this often, is this, does this happen a lot, or what's the story? Well, well you can't really uh, predict too much with the weather around here. Oh, um, we've called it off for half an hour. I think it could... Uh, so I think the game will be back on in uh, about thirty minutes. Excellent. That was that was very insightful. Uh, that was thank you to the podcast. But that, like, the, for the fans, but, yeah. That so guy. Thanks very much for coming. Thank on. you. Right. Anyway, back to you in the studio, Clive. Right. I'm just, I'm just getting word. Thirty minutes are up. We're good to go. Uh, it's actually been thirty seconds, but as, as the other man said, it can go at any second. He's lived here forty years and he doesn't know. He so knows. we're going to get back to the podcast. We'll take well, a break. We'll be, we'll I'm be... not the weatherman. You're no. still here. He's still here. He's not the weatherman. Okay, well, he's lived here long enough. Can we have the mic back now? Right. We'll be <laughs> back after this break. And we're back. The game continued. The podcast goes on. We're fine. Jackie, are you still with me? I'm still here. I'm a little bit wet, a little bit soggy. Yeah, you'll be fine. But I'm better it for happens. it. I feel fresh. Okay, obviously you've had a little joke there about what happened. Can we talk about what happened? <laughs> we can. It was kind of a bizarre one. Obviously, oh. I get that it's a thunderstorm, but I, I love the fact that some... I, I get it's a thunderstorm, it's an open area, it's dangerous. I just love the England fans, because it was so crap, the game. I mean, if it had been later on, I sh- I'm sure that all the fans of the stadium would have gone home. If it happened at 70 minutes by, I'm leaving. Yeah. But they were loving it, unlike the players. I mean, the weather was pretty crap. I don't know what you made of the weather. Well, I've got so much to say on this. 
there was missed opportunities, there were comedic moments, and there was there was the fans trying to trying to have a good time. The missed opportunity, why Joe Hart wasn't out with his head and shoulders, giving it large, that would have been the best bit of advertisement I've ever seen, Jack. That is actually a great idea. Even if it was just did his warm up after the break. I, I, I'll tell you what I thought. I know there's a risk of lightning here. I, I like the way that Tilsley and uh, Townsend just left out there. I see people like let's just see what happens. You know, let's not get him in. Childs, Huddle, Wright, and Dixon straight in the tunnel. Be safe. All right, you're on big contracts. Tilsley and Townsend just see. Just you know, it's an umbrella. You know, it's once. It's once. It's one in three million that this could happen. But you know, that's a. Uh, Let's see how it goes down. But yeah, that was a disappointment. My probable, my favourite highlight was Roy Hodgson when he had a little interview. He looked like the kid that had forgotten his PE kit and had to borrow someone else's. I was going to say, to me, he looked like the guy who just... He, he looked like a really old man who was just lost. Just wandered yeah. onto the cell. Oh, oh, oh you've got a camera, right? Do you want me to talk about stuff? And they kind of give him the microphone and he sat there after us. And then they, they kind of, you saw uh, Agent Charles go to give him the microphone, then take it back, and then he's really awkwardly, like, prodding it in Roy's face. And as Roy sways in oh, his merry little so way, he's there following him. I but felt so cool. Do you think the rain had a negative effect on the game? I mean, obviously, it did to some degree. There's always, I think everyone was thinking, oh, God, there's going to be injuries galore here. Well, and then that thought continued through the second half as the tackles flew in. But from a footballing standpoint, obviously, it's not ideal. Gerard said post match that he felt like they were about to, and Hart as well said that they felt like they were about to get the better of um, Honduras. Maybe they would have. But like it's easy to say that we're, like Hart said we're about to rip them apart. Well, it's easy for you to say because we, we, like it never got to happen. Um, aside from that, I don't really think it had that much effect. It's not ideal, but you know, it's it's not. It wasn't that much different from a half time. It was a bit longer, but you know, they, they were playing a bit. They went back out there, had another break. That was probably the thing that got them. The fact they played a bit, had a break, played a bit, and then had to have another break. Yeah, that, that would have. That's probably the worst part of it. Um, I, don't, I thought. Shall we? We'll go second half then. We've, we've touched on Barkley. I thought. I thought Barkley. He didn't change the game, but he looked excited. No, he looked sharp, and it, it's rare that we have an exciting player. I kind of wish Oxley Chamberlain had a, had a chance to come on because I don't feel like Lalana or Welbeck set the kind of world on fire in the second half, particularly. Both of them were fairly quiet, but then it was one of those games where it was difficult for a player to really stand out given everything yeah. that was going on. I thought I gave Wilshire a lot of shit. I actually thought Wilshire came on and just. He, he did a similar job to Henderson's but just got the ball and gave it and made the occasional run like I was actually I give him a hard time but he actually played alright um, I'm trying to think who else was okay I, we, we shut on Lallana he was a bit indifferent he didn't have the ball enough there was no space I said, actually we'll talk about Lallana's space and, and it goes back to Glenn Johnson Glenn Johnson runs down the wing gives it gets it back cuts inside and where is he he's right where Lallana wants to be Johnson should be given it, sticking out wide, whipping a ball across for storage while Beck Rooney to pop in, if those three are going to play. But he doesn't. He thinks he can score every time he cuts inside on his weaker left foot. Yeah. <sighs> Bloody hell. Like, I've been... Like, I've supported Johnson for quite some time. Today, tonight, end of my tether. I was just like, forget it. If you're just going to continue to do the same thing over and over again, then I hope Liverpool don't renew your contract. Because I can't be doing with it. Yeah. It's one of those weird ones where the England black back line may maybe Baines is the exception in Cahill as well, but I don't know. It just doesn't look as strong as it has. I've got cramp. Sorry, you've got, you've got cramp. Is that is Sorry. that because of the breaks this that was, we've been this having? Was not a planned moment, everyone. Fuck. Sorry. Oh my word. This is what happens when we have breaks in the podcast. The players <laughs> just cramp up. They don't have time to rewarm up afterwards. It's tragic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The first thing we did. That was planned. This isn't planned. Bloody hell. Right, get the oh. physio on. Get the physio I'll play on. My on. Jesus. It's okay, it's fine. Can we get the podcast manager on? <laughs> this is pretty one. And this is either the best podcast we've ever done or by far and away the worst one. Well, the, 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 the thing with the, this kind of thing is we are two <sighs> England fans. This is your chat down the pub kind of rant after the game that you can't yeah. have if you happen to be a student with no money, such as me and no doubt Ben. So this, this, this is the this is the this is the the real ranting and rambling of an England fan that we should this should yeah. really be its own separate thing. But we're just calling it for the fans extra because it's kind of an opportunity for us to just go. You know what? Screw professionalism. Screw taking it seriously. Let's just have a go on England. I mean, yeah. if England win the World Cup, this is all going to be incredibly awkward, and there's going to be loads of extra shows we really didn't factor for. No, this will this will go viral for our idiocy, but. Um... 
uh, give, leave your suggestions. Tweet us what you think or what you thought about the game. High point, low point. Um, it doesn't actually have to be involved in the game. Just something that Adrian Charles asked anyone. He was getting anyone on, wasn't he? He Rex, was. They were desperate. Hudson, the, other, the manager who wasn't the manager of the stadium. <laughs> to be fair, but, all the fans might be like that by the end of it. If, oh, with guests. Yeah. We'll just get anyone on. We'll get anyone on. If you want to be on for the fans, tweet us. There's no guarantee here, but <laughs> we might give tweet you a phone us. call. Um, oh. But no, it, um, yeah, it's something different. This is a lot more laid back kind of ranty. Unfortunately, with the game being nil nil, there's only so much you can really touch upon. Obviously, as we go into the World Cup, things will get more serious. Ben, before we go, I mentioned this to you before. Yeah. I want you to give me your free prediction to England's group games now, and then so, we're going to compare our predictions that we gave now after the Honduras game after each England match review. So, all right, I think we'll get a nil nil with Italy. Okay. Um, it'll be much like the, the first two games we played, and everyone will go, "Yeah, good point, good point." I then think we'll beat Uruguay. And remember the Sweden game at the Euros, which was three two. Yeah. A bit up and down. I think it'll be similar to that. Uh, and then I actually think we'll beat Costa Rica. I know that seems unlikely right now. That's, that's a bold one. But, but I'll go two wins and a draw. Seven points. Two wins and a draw. Okay. That's I'll, very optimistic. After I all know. I, I, was, I, I was, I'm sat here thinking, I don't want to do the same. I'm going to go with five points. Okay, so who would slip in? We're going to spank Costa Rica and finish second on goal difference and all draw right. against Italy and Uruguay. Okay. Well, so they're, they're my predictions. So I'm going to go with a scoring draw against... Italy and I'm actually going to go over we'll go with 1-1 against Italy 3-3 against Uruguay I'm feeling bold speaking of Italy another highlight Townsend giving it large oh I don't think we should really be scared of Italy sorry they've got quite a lot of Juve players who have just won the league at Acanta and they, did, they, they did draw with, the but they drew with Luxembourg having played kind of five or six different systems in 90 minutes well actually yeah I, I've said that Uruguay, Uruguay Italy haven't won an international game since November we'll find out Guys, let us know what you thought of this. Let us know what you made of the England performance, more specifically at For The Fan Show, or if you're watching on YouTube, down in the comments somewhere. Uh, other than that, Ben, any closing thoughts? Yeah, United fans, I'm sorry I slagged off Rooney, but you know, it's the truth. Guys, that's it from us. Uh, be sure to check out the iTunes, the Twitter. Links for all that good stuff is somewhere on screen at For The Fan Show, www.forthefanshow.com. Uh, Keep an eye open, guys, for later today because there will be another World Cup review going on uh, for one of the groups on whichever platform you're watching on. Of course, iTunes gets it a day early. Other than that, guys, it is me, Jack. I've been joined, as always, by Ben. This has been For The Fans Extra, a rant to England, and we'll talk to you guys in a bit. I've got a little bit to add. Sorry, everyone. Thank you for supporting the podcast. We've done really well in the iTunes charts. Follow us on Twitter. Bye. Bye.